17. Williams came in shooting 41% from beyond the three-point line, and he's picked up his percentages here today. Cameron Murray either stitched up or with butterflies on his chin. Back at the scorer's table, ready to re-enter. I don't know if they want to bring him back in. The group that's on the floor is doing a number on the Yellow Jackets right now. Maddox, little hook shot goes. Nice little spin move. Could have gone left, could have gone right. Gary Johnson waits, and he'll bring it up court. Seems like anything Louisville wants to do today is going to work. Sure wasn't going that way in the first five minutes. It's been all over the sense. Nice feed inside. Johnson missed with a little too strong off the glass. And Georgia Tech the other way. Glover. Ouch. Drew a foul. And Cameron Murray, who's come back out of the locker room, and you can see he's got a little uh, gear on the chin there that he didn't have when the game started. Got a chin strap without the straps. That's his first. Without the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> he wishes he had it. both. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so Deion Glover's going to go to the free throw line, where he's only one for three today. Georgia's Mr. Basketball. Last year, Cedar Grove and Decatur. I don't think he likes the rims too well in the Georgia Dome so far. Struggling from the free throw line. Well, a few times I've seen him play so far this year, Brad, the one thing you'll notice about him is his power game. He loves to take the ball to the basket. He'll need to develop a 15 to 20 foot jump shot, and if he puts that in consistently, boy, is this guy going to be tough to deal with this year. Mm -hmm. And he got the roll on the second one. It wasn't pretty, but it went in. Glover has eight, but Louisville has a huge lead. fan might be in middle school before Tech gets back in this game because they went an eight-minute stretch without a field goal. They finally had that snapped, but still they trail 40 to 26, as you saw. Well, that drought was pretty bad when you go eight minutes without one, and even with a field goal in there, nine minutes and 20 seconds and one basket. Brad, think about what we were talking about earlier, though, the fact that they were getting all their points in the paint, and Louisville's been able to shut that down. Therefore, Georgia Tech needs to go outside to score. They haven't been able to do that. They certainly haven't. Cameron Murray back on the floor with three stitches in that chin, and he's matched up against Vines. <laughs> Good job by Maddox covering Sanders now. He's got to come out and shut him down. He can shoot from there. Sanders, We've seen it. Yeah, he wanted that shot, too. Under 10 on the shot clock. Johnson off the glass. Rebound. Williams had his hand on it, and it comes back to Johnson. Glover touched it. Go back to Louisville. Talking about the outside scoring, Louisville 6 of 11 from beyond the three-point line. Georgia Tech is 0 for 5. 18-point 18, 18 difference. Bynes just ran into a major screen from Sanders. Nobody yelled help there, and he took it right on the chin. Trying to pack it inside. Williams ran out of real estate. Got too far on the baseline. Trips. And Louisville turns it over. Right, I was watching Tony Williams that time when he received the ball down inside. He was going, no, no, don't throw it to me. And they threw it to him anyway. <laughs> he knew he was out of position and didn't have much territory to work down there on the baseline. Georgia Tech looking for offense from the outside, something that has been missing from the opening tip today. They pack it back into Maddox. Michael, nice move on the baseline, and he got the roll. All right, they've gone back inside now with Maddox on two occasions now. Maybe this opening up a little bit more on the inside. Georgia Tech, I would think, would be happy just to get this down to single digits before halftime. Williams, that was not a very good shot. Harpering pulls off the air ball. 12-point game right now. Tech can get it down to 10. Except Glover lost the handle on the dribble. He's been turnover prone today. He's having the kind of game I saw B.J. Mackey have for South Carolina the other night. Just doesn't seem to be able to find the handle on the basketball. And Maddox trying to deny Alex Sanders picks up the foul, and that's three on Mike. He's going to have to sit the remaining 64 seconds of this half. You know, if you're going to defend somebody like Alex Sanders, you know he's not going to shoot the ball that far out with his back to the basket. The only way he's going to score is facing up. Maddox needs to back off. When he turns to face up, then close down on him. Alex Sanders. So Alex will go to the free throw line. The junior out of Houston. Yeah, having a good day and going double figures if he hits this free throw. 
He's had some good games this year. 17 points, 9 rebounds against North Carolina. 21 points, 10 rebounds against Arkansas. Missed the second. Georgia Tech down 13 on quote unquote their home floor. They're in their home city. This isn't their home floor. Normally they play over at Alexander Memorial Coliseum except for this Delta Airlines Classic that is a yearly event. Matt Harpering, nice job with the left hand inside off the glass. He can maneuver inside. Tech with full court pressure. And timeout. 20 second timeout taken. Don't forget, Reese Davis is coming up at halftime. And Dick Vital will be along with his Vital's blenders. And we'll have a preview of the Las Vegas Bowl as well. Oregon will be taking on Air Force in that one coming up later tonight on ESPN. A chance to see Blaine Morgan playing quarterback for Air Force. He's fun to watch. And McCullough for Oregon. Is some kind of running back. What is Dick up to? He's blending some things. Is I this have a, no idea what is, he's is blending. Is this a cooking show we're going to have for Christmas holidays? <laughs> Just another way for him to get on the air. I have a cooking show. 41.5 left in the half. It's an 11 point Louisville lead. Great nice pass. pass down low. And an easy one for Jerry Johnson, but that bucket should go to Cameron Murray, who just threaded a rocket of a pass down court. They're going to hold it for the last shot. Glover standing out there with the ball under his arm. Clock, game clock as well. Matt squares up for three, and it's an airtime. Eightville come from six points down to leading 43-30 at halftime. The Cardinals all over the Yellow Jackets as we set it to our halftime studio in Reese Davis. So, Tony Williams. And a foul. Backdoor cut. Terrific pass inside by Jerry Johnson. As to the other side. Five points and a rebound today. He's been a starter since the 12th game of his sophomore year. Now in his senior season. 64 in a row, huh? Not bad. And Georgia Tech with an lead. Got the garbage rebound. Glover's going to work one-on-one. -on -one. And oh, got that. Oh, my. That was quick. You talk about schooling a defense. That was an outstanding move inside. Watch this again. Deion Glover, spin move, go to the inside, take the blow, and get the basket. Missed the free throw again. Harpering trying to get the offensive board and a big scramble in front of the Georgia Tech bench and a pile up over there. And Jerry Johnson's going to make sure that he is all right. Brad, you and I have seen a lot of freshmen go through this Georgia Tech program through the years. I mean, quality, quality freshmen. I don't think I can remember a guy firepower as Glover. His rebounding ability and the way he handled himself in close reminds me a little bit of Bruce Dalrymple, but he's a bigger player than Bruce was and more offensive-minded, but uh, that kind of strong, I guess. His best working against Vines. Sanders, high post scissor cut. Bring all over him. Tech trying to pick it up on the defensive end. Here's Johnson, missed the three. Nice backside rebound, and underneath, another chance, and it goes for Alex Sanders. Boy, that time, Dantzler and Sanders were all over that rim. And a backcourt foul. That's not Jerry Johnson. That's his third. We'll have to kind of watch that because he's been such an integral part of the Cardinal attack today. Brad, that was a seventh team foul for Georgia Tech. It's one and one. We still got, uh, what, 15, 56 to play? Yep. So Glover at the free throw line where he struggled, but he ripped that one. He is three of seven. Sorry, I said Georgia Tech. Actually, line. the Cardinals who committed that seventh team foul. This could help Georgia Tech. If they can make them count at the strike. Oh, really? And the second one comes out. Lovers in that 50% area from the free throw line today. Here's Johnson for three. And tip kept alive. Now Williams wide open. He'll try a triple. Still no good. Underneath. 
Ball is loose and finally picked up. Maddox clears off a miss. Louisville had three chances and came away with nothing. Great offensive rebounding inside. Just couldn't get it to finish. 57-48 and a foul down low. And it's going to go on Alex Sanders. Trying to defend Matt Harper. So now Matt's going to go to the free throw line. He's a little more automatic than most of the players on the floor from the strike. Harpering averaging almost 23 points a game to lead the Atlantic Coast Conference. Well, this is Georgia Tech Club that's shooting 70% from the free throw line, and they're struggling getting the ball to go in. Yeah, they are fighting it today, that's for sure. And now the foul on Georgia Tech. Mike Maddox picks up his fourth, and Bobby Kremens fit to be tied on the sideline. 57 to 48. Georgia Tech has made it a game, though, in this first five minutes of the second half, courtesy of their freshman sensation, Deion Glover. Why the long face, chum? It's my car. Let me show you how things could have been. Chrysler and Plymouth presents It's a Wonderful Event. Now get 1500 cash back on Plymouth Neon. Get Chrysler Series LXI at 18995 Or get up to 1000 cash back on Plymouth minivans. Say, are you an angel? You watch too many movies, friend. <laughs> Today, people who didn't send the money Western Union and the heartbreak it caused. What happened, Alex? Um, my cousin Richie was getting married. And uh, the night before he calls me up, he lost his wallet and he can't pay for the tux. And? I went to the overnight delivery place. Do not send cash! It says right here on the envelope! Do you want to see the wedding photos? Yeah! yeah. Here's Richie and his lovely bride, Faye. Hey, it's your money. Use Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Ready for the Edge Pizza? Just take a deep breath and choose between four varieties of the new pulchritudinous pizza that take toppings to the edge. Then plunk down $8.99, close your eyes, and yell Geronimo. And when you're done, you'll be a man, my son. Have you been to the edge? In this year's NHL All-Star Weekend, all eyes will be on the Norelco Super Skills Challenge. Somebody will take four shots and could win up to five million bucks. Hockey players not eligible, but you are. See your Norelco retailer for details. Well, the Delta Airlines Classic for children, and there are children of all sizes and shapes and hair colors, including my own kid there on the left. And the other one might as well be mine. She's at my house all the time. Brad Nestler and Larry Conley with you from the Georgia Dome. See you, kids. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. 67% for Tech in the second half from the floor. And Louisville not exactly cold shooting, but Georgia Tech has definitely picked up the intensity of this ball game. They led in the first half by six, fell behind by as many as 17 in that first 20-minute stanza, and they've come storming out of the locker room. Tech could be even closer. They could make some free throws. Exactly. Georgia Tech's now gone to a zone. It's like a 1-2-2 two -two matchup. Try to leave it in the lane. Louisville getting a little bit sloppy, too, and Tech trying to pick up the defensive effort. 15 on the shot clock. Best comes back. They feed inside. Nice movement with the basketball. And finally, the baseline jumper, and they got it. Eric Johnson's been struggling all day in close. He either needs to slam it or shoot from the outside. That's got to be his game. Here comes that trap again by Louisville. This is something Bobby Crimmins did not see from this Cardinal team down in San Juan. Denny Crum has put this in, and uh, I think they have surprised Georgia Tech a little bit today. Full court pressure. Larry's talking about it. It's forced a few turnovers by Georgia Tech today. Harpering. Battle for position inside. He gives an elbow to Eric Johnson, and Matt picks up the offensive foul. Boy, he was banging bodies down there. He wanted the ball down low, and he just threw a little shoulder and a hip. We may have to call, yeah, we may have to call the United Nations to get this one settled down there. I want to tell you what, they've been going at each other pretty good from about the opening start. So Harpering will sit. And now, 
a younger lineup for sure for Georgia Tech. You've got four freshmen on the floor and a sophomore. Foul problems have caused that for the little. Maddox in foul trouble. And Harper in going to get a breather right now. Good look inside. Williams is all alone. Jones altered the shot a little bit, but not enough to keep it from going in. And now Georgia Tech with all their young guns on the floor. Glover. Oh. Does he take it to the basket? Wow. And Eric Johnson off the glass. That's a terrific play, too. Talk about taking it to the basket. Strong move, and Johnson draws the foul. Let's watch these two power moves. Watch the freshman from Georgia Tech. One of the best, I think, in the country, Deion Glover. Nice move down in there. Go back and take a look at the fourth junior from Cincinnati, Eric Johnson, with a nice move. He goes hard on the tailbone, but got the points at a chance to add his ninth. He's got six rebounds, a couple of thunderous dunks today, and he got the free throw as well. Georgia Tech trailing by 14 again. They had cut it down to seven. Here's Glover. Tech's got numbers. It'll be Vines. It'll try a three, and he got it. Boy, they get somebody else to help from the outside. That could keep them in the game. That three-pointer cuts it back to Louisville by 11. Best has been an able replacement today at the guard position. Yes, he has. Not scoring, but just taking care of the basketball. And here he is offensively. Missed a three, and Jones the rebound in front of Troy Jackson. Spivey now slows it for the first time. And Georgia Tech another opportunity to get it down into single digits if they can score. Spivey working one-on-one -on -one with Best. Leaves it for Floyd on the baseline. The oh, by Glover. Oh, what a play. Larry Rose is going to wave it off. And that's not going to be a popular decision in this dome, but let me tell you, this is one of the great non-baskets of this season. Brad, you and I both came out of our chairs on this one. Look at that. Oh, what a strong move. Deion Glover. Man. <laughs> That was fun to watch, even though it doesn't count. You and I almost knocked each other <laughs> over in our chairs here. <laughs> it remains 64-53. Outside jumper doesn't go. Glover will get the rebound. Yeah, you're looking at the future of uh, Georgia Tech basketball on the floor right now with all those freshmen. He takes it down. Didn't get enough on that one in close. But a foul on the follow. And Jones is pushed by... Jackson, that's Troy's first. Jones trying to get that three-point play on the inside. Bobby Krim is also off of the bench. One of that two points and have a chance for a three-point play. Alvin Jones, the third. Matt Harpering coming back in. Georgia Tech substitution, number 15. He got a quick breather. And Georgia Tech did well when he was out of there. Floyd will sit. Jones played for his dad, Alvin Jr., his high school coach in Lakeland, Florida. Good. Got them both. All of Alvin scoring from the free throw line. Doing a nice job defensively with some block shots today. He pushed Georgia Tech back to within nine. Ryan's trying to put some pressure on Murray up front. And that's Spivey doing the same thing to Johnson. Jackson threw it away. Jones with a steal. The outlet to Glover. Two on two. Glover and Harpering bringing it up. Glover takes it all the way in himself. And he's fouled. Brad, this guy is doing everything for Georgia Tech right now. When Harpering was out of the game, Glover carried the offensive load. Now Harpering's back in there. It doesn't make any difference. Look at the good steal by Jones. Jackson with a telegraph pass, but here's Glover on the other end. Harpering gave him a little bump to open up the avenue. Thank you. Look at Glover high-stepping it down that sideline. What a game Deion's had. 19 points. This free throw could put him right on his average. Six rebounds. Maybe one of the great two-point shots taken away that we'll see all year <laughs> a couple of minutes ago. Uh, this end of the floor. One chain in the armor a little bit is his free throw shooting note. Does not shoot the ball well from the stripe. There's one. Got it. 
20 for Glover. And Georgia Tech is within striking distance. 64-58, and suddenly the Tech faithful make some noise for the first time in a long time. Lions trying to fight through screens, trying to keep up with Cameron Murray. That last foul was the 10th on Louisville, by the way, so Tech's going to be shooting free throws, a couple free throws each time they're fouled. This time the foul is on the other end, and it will go on Glover. In basketball uh, terminology, we call this a seal. You seal the guy off down on the inside. Damian Dantzler made a nice pass, got inside with a nice lob and an easy one for Alex Sanders. There's the foul trouble. Maddox with four for Georgia Tech and Jones with three, Maven four, and two of the Johnsons and Tony Williams with three each. Alex rips a free throw with 11.59 remaining in the ball game. 65-58 Louisville. light thing from Polaroid. With Plymouth, this is what you pay for. And this is what you get. Take, for example, Plymouth Breeze. You get modified double wishbone suspension, air conditioning, lots more. And... There are millions of reasons to fly today. Only one that matters to you. Delta Airlines, it is our pleasure to get you to the place you want to be. Delta Airlines, on top of the world. Louisville's lead has been sliced to seven. 65-58, just under 12 minutes left from the Georgia Dome. And Dion Glover a few moments ago. This looked like one of those things, Larry, where they have the daredevils at halftime on those mini tramps. Yeah, I know. I, I thought maybe he was going to get the trampoline and just <laughs> jump over the basket on that one. This basket did not count. Larry Rose called an offensive foul on Deion Glover for that move, but that's one of the best ones we've seen all year. And Larry made the right call. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely was right because Glover went right up over the back. But it was a good afternoon. Eight out of 11 from the field, 20 points, six boards. Harpering double-teamed on the inbound. Matt's a good dribbler, and he's going to clear everything out for Spivey. Georgia Tech's back in this game now, Brad. They've been battling back on the back of Deion Glover. Got virtually a three-guard offense in there now with Vines, Spivey, and Glover. Harpering and Jones down low. Spivey, he got bumped. He got more than bumped by Nate Johnson. And that's going to be four on Nate. Nate's got his name in the scorebook more for his fouls today than anything else. Nate came into this game averaging 10 points a game, but he has not had a typical Nate Johnson game. It's been a stitches couple of days for Louisville. Mm -hmm. We talked about Murray getting three in his chin. Nate had four on that thumb that I think has hampered his play offensively today. And we saw him get tangled up in one of the Georgia Dome rims yesterday, and there was blood flying all over until they got that stop. And then Nate's going to go to the bench now. As Spivey's... Free throw. It's made it 59, uh, 65, 59. Well, what an advantage for Georgia Tech for the rest of this game to be able to shoot two free mm -hmm. throws, knowing, that, knowing every time they get fouled, they're going to be walking up there with a chance to add a couple of points. And they do. Spivey got them both. It's a five-point game. Certainly didn't look like it was going to be capable of being a five-point game a few minutes ago. Murray leaves it for Johnson. He tried to stuff it, and Jones blocked it, but he also got the foul. Alvin upset with himself that he didn't get that cleanly, but it's hard to on a shot like this. I want to tell you what, he was waiting for it, too. Look at that. He avoided the foul right there, the first one coming in, and then turned around and tried to block this one. Look at this play. Yeah, he got a lot of the arm. Yep. Three. He got a lot of ball, but he also got some arm, and that'll send Eric Johnson to the free throw line. Eric Johnson, who started 
most of his freshman season before a knee injury set him back a couple of years, really. And the junior out of Cincinnati's had a pretty good day today. Rips both free throws, 11 for Eric. Good trap again by Louisville. Vine splits a double team. Spivey sets up for a three, and he got it. Well, all of a sudden, Travis Spivey, Spivey has become the offensive man. Well, these freshmen are outstanding, aren't they? They're fun to watch, and it's become a ball game, folks. 67-63 as we approach the midway point of the second half. Jones has got to be careful, playing with four fouls. They're going to try to go after him, but they lost the handle. And that was just Dantzler not handling it at all. This is a good pass by Jerry Johnson. He dropped it right into the post position. You know what they're trying to do. They're trying to go right at Alvin Jones, get his fifth foul. A wise choice, but it didn't pay off there. Glover ahead to Harpering. Harpering drives off the glass. Now, if he gets heated up to go along with Glover, look out. Did we have any thought that this would be a two-point game at this stage minutes ago? Danny Crum didn't either. He just called a timeout. Ten minutes, 28 seconds to play, and all of a sudden, we've got a classic from Atlanta. 67-65, Louisville by Deuce. Hey, check out this cool new screwdriver. Lights? See, it's got a built-in flashlight. A flashlight that focuses the light exactly where you need it. It's called the driver light, and it's only $19.99. Now I can work in the dark. You know, if the lights go out, or outside in the yard after the sun goes down. The sturdy driver light is perfect for working around corners or behind things. I'll use the driver light under the sink, under the hood of the car, or in the basement. The 28-piece driver light is perfect for working in those hard-to-see places, in closets, crawl spaces, in the attic, under furniture, places where a handy lighted tool would make an awkward job much easier. With your driver light, you get a screwdriver, 16 bits, 9 sockets, the built-in flashlight, 2 batteries, and the sturdy carrying case. Great tool, great price. Hey, you should get one. The driver light is available at your local Kmart store, or you may call 1-800-869-5995. That's 1-800-869-5995. Call now. Your predictions were correct. You're the man, Bob. Come on. How'd you get in here? Be a fan. I am a fan. Then you could win the ESPN Be a Fan Ultimate Road Trip presented by Bud Light. Log on to ESPN Sports Zone and predict who will win each of the Big Monday matchups. Big Mondays! You yeah! and a friend could hit the road for the ultimate road hey, trip. Go to road WAC trip, Big East and Big 12 Conference Championship games. Can I bring Bob? And a friend. Bob is my friend. Hopefully this man won't win the ESPN Be a Fan Ultimate Road Trip presented by Bud Light. Enter now. Georgia Tech trailed by 16 points in this half. They've cut it down to two. Reason? Easy. Good shooting from the outside. Travis Spivey with a big three beyond the arc. They didn't have a single three-point field goal in the first half. Spivey's gotten them back in the game along with Deion Glover and Matt Harpering. The three-point shooting, Brad, the first half versus the second half. And everybody's getting in the axe. Spivey has one, Harpering has one, Maddox one, and Vines one. Just complete reversal of fortune. Inside, Johnson goes over Glover. Good nice move. move. Is that pretty? Mm -hmm. Eric Johnson. Harper needs some help. Came into Vines, who was off balance, had to catch and throw, and threw it away. And there's that pressure by Louisville paying dividends. Georgia Tech can ill afford to get sloppy with a basketball now, just when they've gotten themselves back in this thing. Now you make, Brad, that's a great point, because they've gotten it to within two. Now they're down four, and Louisville with possession. They need a stop. Sometimes you get to the top of that mountain, it's real tough to go over. Yeah, that's right. You get to the peak and then you lose it. Harpering trying to stay in it, and Spivey had a hand on it. Johnson from 10. Harpering strong defensive rebound, and Tech wants to run. This could cut it down to a one-point game. Jones on the backside for the rebound of the tip in by Glover. Guess who? He's everywhere. What a 
pick and Vines just goes down hard again. He ran right into Sanders. The same thing happened earlier in this game. Somebody's got to yell help. Well, poor C.J. Vines is going to get killed. Here he is offensively. And he'll go to the free throw line. You know what? He just made a great move. One, he took the blow on the other end from Sanders, and it was Sanders who commits the foul against him on the other end. What a screen by Alex Sanders. I mean, he absolutely jarred the teeth. Watch Glover on this follow-up earlier, though. Watch the ball come across on the other side. Watch him sneak in there. Oh, he it with the left hand. Yeah. Did it with the left hand. And TJ still feeling the effects of that pick he ran into. 10 freshman out of Woodstock, Georgia. Travis James Bynes. And missed the free throw. Sanders picks up his third. And there's a little bit of foul trouble, a lot to go around. Just in case yeah, just this wondering. game goes an extra stanza. Both these teams are going to be wondering where the live bodies are coming from. You know, Vines missed both those free throws. I'm wondering if those chimes are still ringing. I in think there. so. That was a serious wall he ran into that was wearing a number 44 red jersey. Here's a lob. Johnson! No way to stop that. That was about six inches short of the shot clock. That's high percentage field goal shooting. <laughs> Man, was he up there. Just when Georgia Tech had it down to a two-point game, it swells back to six. It's a great play if you've got the people that can get up there and get it. Boy, can he ever get up. And that's a guy who had a very serious knee injury a couple of years ago. Offensive foul on uh, Jerry Johnson. And that's four on Jerry Johnson. Nice job defensively by Spivey. All right, take a look again at that screen there, set. Here goes Vines down. I mean, Sanders absolutely nailed him. Look at this terrific pass with Damian Dancer inside. Eric Johnson with a finish. That one looked like the dunk masters of old back in the 80s with Louisville. 8.40 left in the ball game and a timeout. Timeout, Georgia Tech. With Georgia Tech taking that timeout, 73 to 67. 8.40 left in the ball game, and Louisville stretching its lead back out here in Atlanta. They look the same on the outside. But inside, it's a whole different story. Because Duracell batteries outlast Energizer. And test after test proves it. Better make it the alkaline batteries proven to last longer in the devices you use most. Better make it Duracell. You protected your face all night. Why stop in the locker room? The Norelco Reflex Action Razor. Anything closer could be too close for comfort. When you're looking for anything from gold bulbs to silver bells, stop in and see the folks in the red vest. They've got plenty of decorating and gift ideas to make your season bright. Holiday season or any season, Ace is the place for the helpful hardware folks. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! National Car Rental, we believe that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. Because at most major airports in America, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental. for children and a lot of kids both Louisville and Georgia Tech fans in attendance here today Georgia Tech had cut the Louisville lead to a single basket and now the Cardinals have stretched it back out 73 to 67 again a lot of foul trouble on both sides of the court all those players with four personals Marcus Maven with those four fouls. Uh, a lot of those coming as, as a result of defensive lapses. Should Alvin Jones pick up his fifth, it would take a huge 
chunk out of Georgia Tech's defense. He's not even on the floor right now. Bobby Kremens does not want him fouling out. When it gets down to crunch time, they're going to need him inside. You know, Brad, he was taking a big gamble leaving him out there as long as he did. Spivey for three. A little bit short. Glover went up for the rebound, and he and Johnson collide. I don't know who the foul's going to be on. It's going to be on Eric Johnson, I think. Eric's pointing at himself as if to say, is it on me? He and Glover both went up strong, and uh, a collision in midair will send Deion Glover to the free throw line for two. This kid has been sensational again today. McDonald's and Parade All-American last year in high school, leading his club out of Decatur out there. Cedar Grove to the double-A title. And as Larry said, the only thing he's struggling with is really his free throw shooting. Got the second. Tech's going to come out and press full court man-to-man. -man. Little, no, a little zone pressure. Harpering on the point. Five-point game. Well, they tipped a the pass there, but Sanders kept it alive. Murray thought about taking a shot over Harper. He's got a little bit of his brother in him, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You bet. And some bumping down low between Johnson and Spivey, and Spivey gets the worst of that. He'll pick up the personal. I get the feeling every time I look up and see the whistle blown, Eric Johnson somewhere in the vicinity. Good point. Whether it's against him or for him, he seems to be somewhere around the ball in the action. And he gets another trip to the free throw line. Eric Johnson at the line, shooting one and one. 15-point day for Eric so far. You gotta remember, this is a guy that's only averaging six a game, mm -hmm. so he's having a terrific day. Might be his coming out party. It's a guy that uh, they've always looked for having great potential and being able to build on that potential, but today he's having a real terrific day. There's a free throw story. Louisville, a lot less attempts, but they're certainly making him count, although he missed the second one. Harpering picks up the loose ball. Ahead to Floyd. It's a three on two. Floyd pulls up for three. Oh, boy, those are the kind of shots where the coach wants to grab you by the throat until it hits the bottom of the net, and then you go, mm, yeah, good choice. <laughs> Cameron Murray trying to penetrate, pulling it back out. Georgia Tech doing a nice job of shutting off the inside. Well, it was Louisville's first half three-point shooting that gave them the big advantage. It's Georgia Tech's five for ten second half that's kept them in this one, and they're only down three, and they've got the ball back. And Eric Johnson threw the basketball away. Pretty good defense that time by Georgia Tech. Down to the 7.35 mark of this ball game. Louisville 74, Georgia Tech 71. Tech was down by 16 points in this half. Glover, short, and whistle, and a foul on Floyd. Uh, maybe not, maybe Spivey. Floyd made the reaction as though it was against him. It's going to be on Spivey. Travis apparently pushed off trying to get position for that rebound. Spivey lost two occasions that time. He not only lost on the foul, he lost his shoe. <laughs> he was down inside trying to establish position. He had no traction. Only that right leg was moving. <laughs> That's a double swoosh down there. So they walk it the other way where Tony Williams will go to the strike. Tony, a nephew of Keith Williams, who was a Louisville guard back in the uh, mid-80s up until 90, also wore that number three. Missed free throw. That's a two-shot foul. Both clubs over the limit. So Williams, a 6'7 sophomore, will get another chance. 11-point game so far for him. And he missed both. Harper wants it badly inside. He's got Dancer and now goes to the corner. Now Maddox calls for it inside. Michael still working for position. Gets it and wheels in the lane. This could tie it. Does! Now the two seniors showing their good leadership. Maddox with a good kick out pass to Harper. We got a game. Our first tie since it was 16 apiece at the 11.45 mark of the first half. Murray drives on Harpering. It rimmed out. Second chance goes and a chance for a three-point play, and Maddox is fouled out. Good work by Damian Dantzler inside. One thing Louisville has done well today is rebound on the offensive end. They have really been strong off of that glass. Mike Maddox picks up his fifth foul. Harpering trying to keep up right there with Murray. No way. 
Nice job by Dantzler to get the inside position, draw the foul, and that's going to hurt Tech. Michael Maddox going to the bench. He did all he could. He just put his hands up, and you're still going to have that call when the offensive player is wise enough to get a little bit of a lean toward the basket and off the glass, and Maddox is gone with 6.45 left. And uh, a guy with four fouls comes in to replace him, Alvin Jones. Dantzler rips a free throw. Three-point play for Damian, and it gives Louisville again a three-point edge. See if Georgia Tech can continue to shoot from outside the arc, or if they need to. They have six three-pointers in this half. Harpering, great work. Floyd to try to tie it again. Done! Boy, what a great move by Harpering to get it to Floyd, who nailed it. Well, Mr. Conley, we've been in this spot before in this dome when things go right down to the wire. Maybe we're looking at another one. Cameron Murray off balance. Harpering clears off the rebound. Scrambles, lost it. Last touch by Louisville. It's Georgia Tech's ball. Brad, do you remember that first game you and I did between Louisville and Georgia Tech? James Forrest at the buzzer at for the, the win. the buzzer. That's right. Matt Harpering with a nice spin move to the inside. Jason Floyd just beyond the arc. Nice pass, nice finish. Georgia Tech has battled back. Jason Floyd with two huge three-pointers. 22nd timeout. In a tie game, 77 apiece. With 6-10 remaining in the ballgame. The fans getting their money's worth in the first half of this Delta Airlines Classic today from Atlanta. Georgia and West Virginia play in the second game a little bit later on. Our Duracell storyline of this one. Louisville in the first half had some trouble with their three-point field goals, but uh, Eric Johnson, actually the second half three-point shooting, I should say, and Georgia Tech just the opposite. Seven of 13 outside the arc. Eric Johnson, as Larry mentioned, has been always around the basketball. And Deion Glover, Georgia Tech's sensational freshman, a 23-point day so far. There he is. Sometime this year, this guy's going to jump up and grab 40. Yeah, he probably will. Well, he had 20. About, thought about Deion Glover. He had 27 in that loss against Kentucky that we saw a week ago today at Rupp Arena. Hey. And a steal by Murray. Cameron Murray, can he win the race? He won the race, but he missed the shot, and Glover the rebound. Harpering. Works one-on-one -on -one against Williams. We're under six minutes and almost thrown away again. Harpering fades in the lane. Williams clears it ahead to Murray. Numbers for Louisville. Three on two. Murray pulls up. The tip-in is good. Well, Murray's missed two easy ones down inside, but Louisville followed that one up. Who was that, Eric Johnson that got that? Who else? A career high for Eric Johnson. I got blocked out by the official, but I saw that 23 flash by my face. Harpering for a tech lead, way short. Underneath, ball stripped out of there. Johnson gives it right back to Glover. Glover. Harpering. They're trying everything to get it to go in the hoop, and it won't. And finally, Harpering is fouled underneath by Tony Williams. I look like two boxers in the 13th round <laughs> who had been pounding on each other solidly for all of those 13 rounds, and nobody could get it done inside. Georgia Tech was trying. Look at the, look at the players. They're all bending over, grabbing their pants. Everybody's tired. Louisville was battling, too. Division I AA football championship will follow us from this basketball matchup in Atlanta. It's been a good one. This has been a dandy. Harpering, Georgia Tech is tired. McNeese State and Youngstown State coming up following our game. So Georgia Tech will not tie the score again on this trip down court. Unless Harpering misses this one as well and they get an offensive rebound. They trail by two. And Harpering can make it a one-point game and does. 18 for Harpering. 23 for Glover. Pressure again. T.J. Vines picking up out front. Johnson working.
Larkin against Harpering. Harpering altered the shot a little bit, and the rebound comes off to Spivey. Georgia Tech hasn't led and since the 11-minute mark of the first half. They have an opportunity here. And did Nate Johnson pick up another foul? If he did, he's gone. Yes, he did. Yeah, he pushed underneath. Right where the baseline and the sideline comes together over there. Look at the team fouls, timeout situation. Louisville with only one full left. Tex got 120 and one full. Nate Johnson, a 10-point score, leaves scoreless today. And five fouls. Matt Harpering, another double-double today, by the way. 18 points, 10 rebounds right now. Travis Spivey, all his scoring is coming this second half. 6-3 freshman out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. As I mentioned, Georgia Tech hasn't led since it was 18-16. They lead now. Unbelievable. Now they've got a chance to do something with it. Louisville's had to take good care of the ball. All alone, Williams gave up a three. Penetrates and dishes inside to Dantzler. Well, once again, Louisville showing good ball handling ability. That's the way you pass the ball and find the open man. Cardinals didn't panic on that possession. They got down one and came right back. We approach the four-minute mark. Inside, Alvin Jones off the glass. Sanders couldn't do anything about that. Good possession inside and good position by Jones. Final four minutes from Atlanta of regulation. Brad Nessler and Larry Conley from the Georgia Dome. It's 82 to 81. Georgia Tech once down 16 in this half has a one-point advantage. Williams got up in the air. Jump ball will give it to Georgia Tech on the possession error. Alvin Jones with four fouls challenging the jump shot of Williams. Watch again. Look at Jones go out. Good position right there. Tony Williams trying to go up. Good call. Substitution number four, Jerry Johnson. Jerry Johnson back in for Louisville. He had the sensational first half with the outside shooting. And again, Louisville maintains that full court pressure. Although now they clear off a little bit, waiting on Deion Glover to bring it up against Eric Johnson. Oh, these two guys have had a great day. Yes, they have. Glover getting that one-on-one -on -one dribble going. Lost it, though, going up. Last touch, I believe, they're going to say Alex Sanders went off his knee, maybe. The Georgia Tech will maintain possession. 18 on the shot clock, 332 in the game. Glover doesn't want to try to do too much right now. I mean, they need some help offensively with Maddox out of the game. Glover and Harpering really the only guys that have been scoring. And one guy that's hit those big uh, threes, Floyd, not in the lineup right now. Harpering working hard without the ball, and he gets it outside. He'll take it from there. Got it from there. Just inside the three-point line. 20 for Harpering. Georgia Tech's lead goes to three. It was Harpering and Glover that destroyed Louisville down in San Juan. And Glover, again. here comes some more destruction. Tech won't be denied. What a comeback by the Yellow Jackets. From 16 down to five up. That would be a 21-point swing for you math majors. Louisville needs a basket badly right here. Do they ever. They and they lose it. the ball. Harpering and Glover, they'll come up two on two. And the senior does the wise thing, pull it out and use some clock. And we're down at 2.25 left. Georgia Tech leading by five. I've got to believe Bobby Kramer's going to get a little conservative here in a minute. He doesn't want to push it too fast. He's got the advantage. Jones, Georgia Tech has its biggest lead of the ballgame. Well, they worked it right to the right man inside. Jones with an easy one. And with two minutes, ten seconds remaining, Georgia Tech has upped its lead to seven. 88 to 81. Two minutes left here, but let's head to the studio right now and Reese. It's freezing. It's quiet. But you get used to it. You grow to love it. Snow Fox 2-1. This is Snow Fox base. It's Snow Fox 2-1. Then a storm comes up. And I'm the one who's got to get us out of here. And I remember who gave me courage. This is for them. For my mom and dad, who never missed a game. 
And for Drill Sergeant McCardle, who showed me what it takes to be a leader. Contact, Sergeant. And for myself, who became one. I stand here carrying on a great tradition. I've been Coors Light, like my father, his father, and his father before him. It's frost brewed and Rocky Mountain cold. It makes people feel refreshed. I think my forefathers would respect that. If not for them, I wouldn't be who I am today. Bob Smith, the fourth, beer man. This one's for you, Grandpa. I'm not your grandpa. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is presented by the 68,000 professionals at Delta Airlines. Well, in the Delta Airlines Classic, Georgia Tech has taken flight here in the last 10 minutes of this basketball game, and they lead by seven, their biggest advantage of the ball game, 88 to 81. And they're doing it with Matt Harpering, the senior, and Dion Glover, the freshman. Well, this was off of a steal. That's only one of about five spectacular plays that freshman has had today. I'll tell you what, he is a pleasure to watch. You know what, and he does it in an unassuming way. I mean, he's not flashy about it. He's not a trash talker. He simply goes out and plays the game. And I happen to like that. I saw him yesterday say something to the other freshman, Travis Spivey, who was upset about a play in practice, and Dion very calmly said, hey, man, it's just one play, forget it. <laughs> and that is wise beyond his years. Exactly. Here's Eric Johnson. He's been the man today for Louisville, and he got a three. That's big. Eric Johnson has picked it up and carried this club. Career high ball game, but Deion Glover's alone on the other end. And Georgia Tech gets it back. Murray lost it out of bounds. 90-84. Yellow Jackets with 138 left. Don't forget, Division I AA football championship follows us. And we can only hope that Youngstown and McNeese will bring you the kind of thrills that uh, we've had in this basketball game today. It's been a game of big plays, sensational plays, and lead changes and mood swings, if you will. Right now, Tech by six and trying to use some clock. Very entertaining game, obviously, for the Georgia Tech fans, not so much for the Louisville fans. Glover kicks outside to Vines. He'll try a triple. Johnson with a rebound. All right, they got a chance now. Down six, they've got to have a couple of baskets. I think they've got to go to three. Yeah. Two possession game if they go threeville, and they will. No, they won't. Now they got to go to the drive, and Johnson missed in close, and a foul after the miss is going to go against Louisville, and Spivey went down hard. That might have been the trip down court that Louisville absolutely needed, or they wouldn't have a chance to do without. Brad, I'm going to tell you what, for all of the games that we've seen so far this year, what kind of year is Deion Glover going to have on the basis of these highlights? Look at this spin move down the inside against Dantzler, drawing the foul. That's just one. Look at this move on the baseline. Coming up, works his way to the inside and gets an easy tip in. Deion Glover has had a tremendous afternoon. Has he ever. Travis Spivey. Yeah, there are a lot of ACC coaches right now probably tuning in watching this game. By the way, Florida State and North Carolina are getting ready to square up. What a game that's going to mm -hmm. be. You're smelling upset there, aren't you? Yeah, I like Florida State a lot. They're my pick team, surprise team of the year. Well, Georgia Tech seemingly has this under control right now, up seven with less than a minute to go. But Louisville showed in the first half that they've got great three-point shooters. They're going to have to start to use them pretty soon. Here's one of the guys that lit it up in the first half, but Tech's aware of that defensively. They're all over Johnson. Well, they are covering the outside of that arc. They're all over everybody. He goes up with it anyway, and it rimmed out on him. Alvin Jones clears out the rebound, and he's fouled in the process. And Georgia Tech right now is 36 seconds away from its seventh win of the year. Brad, I want to pass along some compliments to another player out here we haven't talked a great deal about, but Alvin Jones avoiding his fifth foul and being able to stay in there, rebound, and help his club defensively, I think has been a big plus for this Tech club and one of the reasons why they've jumped back in this league. And we talked about Alvin having played high school ball for his dad, who was uh, playing in Europe at the time Alvin was born. Also, his dad played with the Harlem Globetrotters for a time. 
had an uncle that could play football a little bit too. James Jones, remember him with the Florida Gators, and then he took so many great handoffs from my other partner, Gary Danielson, with the Detroit Lions. You're still handing out to Gary, aren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> Outside, Johnson, long three-quarters, and air ball. Deion Glover pulls it off the backside. Tech just wants to burn clock now here in the final 20 seconds of the ball game. Harpering to Vines. Tech moves it around. Glover collides with Jerry Johnson. And that is going to be it for Jerry Johnson, who played a heck of a ball game, especially in the first half offensively. He's going to foul out with 16 seconds remaining. He did play very well today. Georgia Tech substitution, number 34, Jason Lloyd. And for number four, Alvin Jones. You know, the thing about it is it doesn't get any easier for Louisville. They've got to turn around and play two tough teams in uh, Mississippi and Kentucky. One other game before they get into conference play. Louisville substitution, number 15, Travis Best. Georgia Tech, of course, the rugged Jason ACC Lord lies ahead. And Deion Glover might as well hit the free throws now when the game is uh, basically over. <laughs> he struggled there at the line today, but he didn't struggle with anything else. And it's a career game for Deion Glover. 29 points for Glover. Travis Best with a left hand inside for Louisville. Final 10 seconds of the ball game. Georgia Tech will go to 7-2, and two, and they'll have their second win of the year over Louisville. A rare occurrence, beating a non-conference opponent or even playing a non-conference opponent twice in the same season. Bobby Crimmins, tremendous respect for Denny Crum, but today he gets another win over Denny, 94-86. For Larry Conley, I'm Brad Nessler. Our final score, Georgia Tech 94, Louisville 86. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Don't forget, stay tuned for Division I AA Football Championship next.